Hello friends, uh, I am Dr. Chaitanya Shambhagar and I bring greetings from Omega Hospital, Nagpur. Today I am going to discuss with you the role of nutrition and exercise in treatment of infertility. So the topic is fueling fertility. Uh, I bring greetings from Omega Hospital Nagpur along with my directors, Dr. Manisha Shembekar, Dr. Parul Savji and Dr. Ashish Zararia. If you look at the incidence of infertility, it is rising day by day and almost 10 to 15% of the population is now having the problem of conception. And Many people, they just don't know, but there is a link between nutrition and infertility. While the couples can't control all the causes of infertility, there are some points which are not in our hand, but they can control their eating habits. So good nutrition and a healthy body weight, both the things are important for both the partners and that, that can have a significant impact on the ability to conceive. So what I feel is not only the healthy diet, but a Optimum body weight and not only for the female partner, but for the both male and female partners is important for the conception. Uh, slowly, we know that IVF is becoming so common that people have started thinking that sex is for pleasure and IVF is for baby. Recently, there was a news in the Times of India which says, says that sex for babies may soon be a history because IVF gives you a very good success rate. And as the patients, they try to, you know, fo focus on their career first and then they think of planning for pregnancy, it becomes too late and then you, you may have to go for IVF, which gives a very fairly good chance of conception. So if you just look at the causes of infertility, there are many causes. There are female factors, there are male factors, there is a problem with ovulation, there is a problem with tube, there is a problem with sperm count, there is a problem with some genetics or hormonal imbalance and some congenital disorders, infections. But what we are going to focus today is the lifestyle factor. And in this lifestyle factor, there are so many things like obesity and overweight and underweight, both diet, the role of diet, smoking, and of course, alcohol, the things which are becoming very common nowadays. So if you just look at the infertility and the relation with the body weight, you'll find that 30% of the patients with problem to conception have either are overweight or they're underweight. So both the things can also have a problem in conception. We all should know that even underweight with BMI less than 19 can have irregular menses. They may not ovulate or they may have amenorrhea and that means no menses and that can lead to infertility. So if you just look at this skinny models. This is becoming very common nowadays. And they, there are so many girls, they just don't want to gain weight. They, they just want to have, you know, a very good uh, uh, figure and they, especially those who are into modeling career. And therefore, it, there was a much hue and cry on this factor. And some people have even banned catwalk by skinny models. Because this is not normal, this is abnormal, and this is actually a mental disorder. It is called an eating disorder. And where there is something called anorexia nervosa, means the, the those who just don't want to gain weight, what they do, they don't eat anything and they vomit out whatever they eat. This is a psychological disorder. And this is a cause of low body weight, which can be a cause of infertility. So if you want to look like models, remember this is not healthy. This is something which you should not do because if you are too thin, that will have a problem on your ovulation, your fertility, and you may have problem with the conception. So you should have a optimum body weight. It should not be, you should not be too thin and your BMI should not be less than 19. Uh, so undernutrition and malnutrition. This is also one more thing which can ca cause infertility, especially in poor country like India, where there is a problem with malnutrition the loss of weight because of malnutrition and reduced food intake can also lead to delayed puberty, low hormone levels, no ovulation, and the quality of the eggs is also not good. And this can lead to infertility. So uh, there are two extremes, you know, the, some of the uh, girls, they don't want to gain weight. They want to look like models. 
so they have plenty of everything but they don't want to eat and then there's another spectrum where the people are poor and they don't get food to eat proper diet and that can also lead to infertility so these are the two extremes which we see in the society another problem which we are facing which is more serious is the problem of obesity and obesity is known to have its impact on infertilities in both male as well as females the obesity leads to irregular cycles the patient does do not get menses at all there is no ovulation there is increased risk of abortions the if you do iva for any treatment the conception chances they go down the outcome is poor and a patient may have polycystic ovaries so usually you know there is something called as pco polycystic ovarian syndrome where obesity is very common but there are two types of patients where patient have obesity one is pco with obesity and other is non pco with obesity even the patient can have over they can be overweight but they don't have pco their hormone levels are normal but their weight is more both the situations fertility is reduced and therefore you should have optimum body weight if you are overweight and even if you are not pco then the chances of pregnancy are low and even the hormone levels are also low there is no ovulation and this can lead to this leads to abortions also and problem with the conception uh, so if you lose weight and if your weight is more and if you try to you know do something exercise or something and if you do go for weight loss regimes then this is going to help you for fertilization low carbohydrate diet will help you in optimizing fertility especially if there is a pco if you eat less carbohydrates and more of proteins then you will have less insulin resistance pco patients are known to have insulin resistance which leads to infertility so all these things are taken care of by reducing weight uh, so in long term if you have low carb low fat and high protein diet it is definitely going to help you for conception a replacement of carbohydrates with protein is going to improve your uh, weight loss uh, glucose metabolism and also it is helpful for the treatment of pcos and that is the reason why you should have this thing in mind that you should have diet which is you know properly balanced with more of proteins and less of carbohydrates um there is a study uh, which is uh, which has appeared in american journal this was a study carried out on nurses and nurses health study is a very large study where many nurses were you know their their screening was done and they found that those with bmi more than 25 they take long time to conceive and those with bmi less than 19 also take long time to conceive so overweight and obesity as well as underweight and obesity in nurse study found that they have a problem not only with the conception they have a problem with treatment of ivf also so if you are undergoing ivf you will find that implantation rate is reduced the clinical pregnancy rate is reduced and live birth rate is also reduced when the patients are obese or overweight now it has been said that with every in females the pregnancy rate decreases by 5% for every unit of bmi above 29 so when the bmi goes above 29 that means you are too obese in that situation the pregnancy rate goes by 5% when you your weight rises by 1 unit after 29 bmi so that is actually a big issue another thing is in men you see many men having you know taking a lot of alcohol drink beer every day and then they have beer bellies and this beer belly is so typical you can actually figure out that this is a man who is alcoholic and chronic alcoholic from his looks from his belly and this is a beer belly which is so typical this can actually have a problem with the fertility and the male factor of infertility is rising so high that i remember when i was during my college days the incidence of male infertility was only 30 to 30 to 40% and now it has gone to 60% is very high so the question is where have all cowboys gone and this question needs to be answered and it has been found that if the with the bmi is very high then the because of the obesity there are obesity there are many problems in men like the reduction in the androgen and testosterone levels increase in the scrotal temperature and this can lead to erectile dysfunctions this can lead to hormonal disorders and this will lead to reduction in the conception rate every 5 unit rise in the bmi there is 2.4% fall in the sperm count 
and 2% fall in the sperm volume. So both the sperm count as well as volume of the semen goes down with every five unit rise in the BMI after a particular limit. Therefore, you should have weight which is within normal limit, especially even not only obesity, even the undernutrition or the malnutrition or too thin uh, boys, they are also known to have problems because of the hormonal disorders like thyroid disorders or other things, they can also have a problem with fertility. So your weight should be within the BMI of 20, 22 or 24, not beyond 24 and not less than 19. This is true for boys as well as girls. So in male, as I told you, the because of the overweight, they will have problem with erectile dysfunction. The sperm count and the sperm density goes down. The infertility risk becomes three times more and uh, it simulates uh, abnormalities in the semen and therefore you should have a normal weight. Now, there are some problems with the problem of denial. So there are, you know, whenever patients come to us in OPD, we are very cautious. We don't want to, you know, uh, uh, tell them that you are uh, uh, bluntly that you are overweight or you're obese, you don't lo you, you, you should lose your weight because it is offending. And many times the patients, they don't feel good because everybody is saying that and you should have a very clear idea in your mind that whenever you're talking to your patients, you should be, you should be so gentle that whenever you tell them that you have to reduce weight, you should be, you should tell them gently. And that is exactly what we do. We don't criticize them for their obesity. We just try to tell them that it is better if you reduce the weight because the problem is of denial. Some people, they say that I do exercise, I do roj exercise, karti hu, main to kam khati hu, lekin mera vajan kam hi hota. this is a mode of denial. And this denial is so common that you cannot help for this patient. You cannot do anything. So this is a practical problem. And the problem of weight reduction is something which you have to take care of. And you should not actually criticize them for their obesity. There is something called as body shaming. And this body shaming is becoming so important nowadays that you should, that you should actually uh, see to it that you are not offending person who is sitting next to you or in front of you. In fact, we have a store at Nagpur, uh, XXL, triple XL store. Uh, and the name of the store is so what? And that means even if we are obese, so what? We should, there should be no body shaming. And this is actually something which we all should remember. Now I have uh, noticed one thing and which is, which has been proved by the studies also that actually Obesity, overweight or underweight has its impact on infertility. But if the patients are having weight which is more than normal or weight which is less than normal, you should not stop treatment. You should start treatment immediately. And simultaneously, we what we do is we ask the patients to reduce their weight during treatment. So this is something which we all should remember that even if you, if the patients are obese, you should not ask them to come after six months. This is not the solution. क्या करना चाहिए? साथ साथ वजन भी घटाना है, exercise भी करना है और साथ साथ treatment भी करना है. Treatment के लिए time waste मत करो, वक्त जाया मत करो, जल्दी से जल्दी treatment शुरू करो. This is something which you all should remember. So friends, there is no substitute for exercise, and you must do exercise. And in fact, you should motivate your partner. You can actually do exercise together. You couple exercise is something which is really um, going to help you because you know you are doing it together. You uh, share your experiences. You work out together. You are comfortable with each other. You spend time together and also you reduce weight together. And therefore, couple exercise is something which you should do. Go for a walk together. Go for a jog or do some exercise like uh, some, some activity together so that you reduce the weight as well as it is good bonding for the couple. Uh, so the question which is always asked is, shall we continue exercise during treatment? Or just like I have told you, it is a simple treatment, which we call ovulation studies or time intercourse, or it is IUI or it is IVF, you should always remember that you have to continue doing exercise. Uh, nowadays, the concept is take your embryo for a walk. That means even if you have IVF, you are you have done your IVF, 
even in that situation you should you should and you can go for a walk you can do exercise light exercise and you can continue with exercise whatever you are doing sochne se kahan milte hai tamannao ke shahar sochne se kahan milte hai tamannao ke shahar chalne ki jid bhi zaruri hai manzilon ko paane ke liye aur chalna sikho aur chalte raho chalne se hi aapko fayda hoga a johnny walker whisky has got a tagline it says keep walking and this is a very good tagline i like this tagline but it's a whisky and i will add one more point to this keep walking and stop drinking so not only you have to keep walking but you have to also stay away from alcohol and smoking that is also important so what are the guidelines for exercise if you just look just look look at the guidelines the guidelines are very clear for a normal weight normal age group patients who are trying to consume 150 minute per week of moderate activity or 75 minute per week of intense activity is ideal so aapko if you do 5 days in a week if you go for a walk you should 30 minutes per day walk is sufficient if you are doing that or 15 minutes per day of vigorous exercise is sufficient for average bmi person if you are young young girls and young boys they should actually do more exercise and that should be at least 60 minutes per day of moderate to vigorous physical activity and you should go on increasing your exercise in at least 10 minutes bouts and around 1000 steps should be added every day and you should achieve at least 30 minutes of exercise every day for most of the days at least 5 days in a week if not daily you should be able to achieve it for 5 days in a week now if your weight is more than normal for modest weight loss you have to do 250 minute per week of moderate intensity activity or 150 per minute per week of intense vigorous activity that means you have to do 30 minutes of vigorous exercise every day or if you go for a walk then 250 minutes of exercise in a week is something which should be done and if you are you this is something which we all should remember that if you are suppose having a sedentary lifestyle jaise tum kisi office mein kaam karte ho aur office mein tumko table pe baith ke table kursi pe baith ke baithne ka kaam hai aur sirf office work hai you should see to it that you you know take break in between and you just walk or do some muscle stretching yadi aap ghar pe ho home maker ho तो आपको ये ध्यान में रखना है कि ज्यादा से ज्यादा घर के काम करो इफ यू डू हाउस होल्ड एक्टिविटीज देट इज ऑल्सो गोइंग टू हेल्प यू इन रिड्यूसिंग वेट दिस इज समिंग विच इज वेरी प्रैक्टिकल एंड इम्पोर्टेंट जैसे समझ लो आपको एक फ्लोर ऊपर चढ़ना है और आपको चॉइस है कि यू कैन यूज स्टेयर केस और यू कैन यूज लिफ्ट देन ऑलवेज यूज स्टेयर केस यू शुड नॉट यूज लिफ्ट इफ यू हैव यू इफ यू आर गोइंग फॉर से शॉपिंग and if there is a mall which is nearby so park your car uh, say uh, 200 meters away from the mall and then walk for 200 meters this is these are the small small things which are going to help you and this helps in increasing physical activity and reducing the weight as well no not only walking but other activities are also equally important and it is said that guidelines they very clearly say that you should do household chores you should do occupational work you should do sports or games and 10000 steps daily is ideal so you you can play some sports if you are interested badminton you can go for cycling you can do swimming and the advantage of playing sports is that you are doing it as a as a group activity and since you are doing it as a group activity you are with many people around you and therefore you not only do the exercise but you also enjoy during that period so that is the best part now it is said that you should be smart enough and be smart in doing exercise what is smart smart is actually specific measurable achievable relevant and time limited activity so you should slowly increase your activity and realistic physical activity should be done and be smart in doing physical activities 
एंड नॉट ओनली वेन एवर यू आर डूइंग फिजिकल एक्टिविटी यू शुड मॉनिटर यूर फिजिकल एक्टिविटी हम लोग रोज कितने मिनट चले या कितने देर दौड़ लगाई फिर उसको धीरे धीरे कैसे बढ़ाना है आजकल हमारे पास इतने सारे एप्स आ गए हैं हेल्थ एप्स आ गए मॉनिटरिंग के एप्स आ गए सो यू हैव सो मेनी एप्स विच आर अवेलेबल विथ यू यू कैन डेफिनेटली यूज दिस एप्स एंड मॉनिटर यूर डेली एक्टिविटी एंड सी टू डेट स्लोली एंड स्टडीली यू आर इंक्रीजिंग योर फिजिकल एक्टिविटी एंड स्ट्रेचिंग योर सेल्फ टू अ लिमिट वेर यू एक्चुअली स्टार्ट लूजिंग वेट एंड ऑल्सो हेल्प्स इन कंसेप्शन ऑल्सो नाउ द नेक्स्ट पार्ट इज डाइट और डाइट का तो ऐसा है कि एक हाथ में मिठाई है और दूसरे हाथ में एप्पल है तो कोई भी इंसान मिठाई खाएगा एप्पल नहीं खाएगा क्या करे कंट्रोल ही नहीं होता इट इज से एप्पल अ डे कीप्स डॉक्टर अवे ये सिर्फ कहावत के लिए ठीक है बट द फैक्ट इज नो बडी फॉलोज दिस एवरीबडी इज इंटरेस्टेड इन यू नो समिंग समथिंग विच इज हाई कैलरी बिकॉज यू वॉट एवर यू फील लाइक इटिंग यू शुड नॉट इट वट एवर यू डोंट फील लाइक इटिंग यू शुड इट दैट इज द प्रिंसिपल एंड देन इट बिकम्स वेरी डिफिकल्ट इफ यू हैव अ चॉइस यू डेफिनेटली टेन टू इट समथिंग लाइक दिस समथिंग लाइक मिठाई और स्वीट्स राधर देन गोइंग फॉर एप्पल एंड दिस इज द प्रॉब्लम विच वी हैव टू फेस अ गर्ल्स डाइट विल ऑलवेज स्टार्ट फ्रॉम टू मोरू एंड दिस इज कल से हम चालू करेंगे अगले साल चालू करेंगे अगले में चालू करेंगे आज के दिन मैं आराम कर लेते हूँ आज के दिन में थोड़ा सा आज संडे है आज मैं छुट्टी बनाऊंगा कल से एक्सरसाइज चालू करूंगा दिस इज वॉट एवरीबडी सेज दिस इज द एक्सक्यूज सो यू शुड कल करे सो आज कर आज करे सो अब ये जो कहना है ये आपको मानना पड़ेगा कि आपको ये सब जरूरी है कि आप अभी आज ही से तुरंत आपका एक्सरसाइज चालू करो इसमें आप वक्त जाए मत करो टाइम वेस्ट मत करो नाउ अबाउट डाइट प्लान Do you need expert opinion for your diet plan? And uh, is it possible in day-to-day practice? You can actually do that, and you should ideally do that. If your weight is more than average, you should take an expert opinion and just make a meal plan. And you should follow this meal plan. A um, chart, make a daily, or you can have different types of diets. You can have different types of. Uh, you can have choose from the variety of foods. You should not have only you know same thing every day because the guidelines say that. some kind of diet like you know some people they go for keto diet some the people they go for atkins diet then there are so many other diets a particular diet is not going to help you for conception but what is important is you should have a diet which is balanced diet and you can have variety of foods aisa nahi hai ki ye 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 hi khana hai roz tum wohi khaoge to tumko रिबाउंड प्रॉब्लम आएगा आप कुछ दिनों बाद तुम सब बंद कर दोगे और इतना खाओगे कि तुम्हारा वजन और रिबाउंड में और ज्यादा बढ़ेगा सो दैट इज नॉट द आंसर द आंसर इज टू हैव अ बैलेंस डाइट एंड यू कैन हैव वॉट एवर यू वॉन्ट ऐसा कुछ नहीं कि कुछ खाना नहीं कुछ ये खाना नहीं वो खाना नहीं लेकिन प्रॉब्लम स्पेशली विथ इंडियंस इज दैट वी आर सो मच ऑप्शन अबाउट ईटिंग फॉर एवरी सोल्यूशन प्रॉब्लम दर इज सोल्यूशन एंड दैट सोल्यूशन इज कुछ खा लो सर दुख रहा है अरे कुछ खा क्यों नहीं लेते पेट में दर्द है कुछ खा लो आ, कुछ तकलीफ हो रही है अरे कुछ खा लो कहीं बाहर जाना है कुछ खा के जाओ घर से बाहर से वापस आओ कुछ खा लो हमारे यहाँ पे खाने का महत्व तो इतना ज्यादा है कि इस कुछ खा लो के चक्कर में हमारा वजन कैसे और कब बढ़ता है हमें पता ही नहीं चलता और ये एक फैक्ट है और हमारे यहाँ पे फिर फेस्टिवल्स इतने रहते हैं गणेश फेस्टिवल महालक्ष्मी पूजन दशहरा दुर्गा पूजा दिवाली पोंगल छठ पूजा एंड लिस्ट गोज ऑन एंड ऑन एंड ऑन नॉट ओनली दिस वेडिंग्स एंड ग्रेट फैट इंडियन वेडिंग्स दे आर यू नो यू आर लाइक यू हैव टू कंट्रोल योर सेल्फ अदरवाइज इट इज अन एंडिंग यू कैन गो ऑन एंड ऑन एंड ऑन एंड कन्फ्यूजन ही कन्फ्यूजन है सोल्यूशन कुछ पता नहीं इसके लिए हमको खुद को कंट्रोल करना यही एक जरूरी बात है इसी की आवश्यकता है नाउ द मिलियन डॉलर क्वेश्चन इज कैन कपल चेंज इटिंग हैबिट्स आई थिंक वी टॉक अबाउट एक्सरसाइज वी टॉक अबाउट डाइट आई डिल बेस्ट बेस्ट एक्सरसाइज व्हाट यू शुड डू जब भी तुम्हारे सामने किसी ने मिठाई रखी या किसी ने तुम्हारे सामने कोई चटपटी चीज रखी जो खाना नहीं चाहिए तो तुम एक एक्सरसाइज जरूर करना You just 
move your neck to the right and to the left and when you have to do this when somebody offers you mithai or something very interesting which you feel like eating but you should not eat so ye chhota sa exercise aap karo aapki mundi aapki gardan aise hi lao aur aise hi lao unko na keh do to aapka problem solve ho jayega to ye ek exercise hai jo sabse chhota exercise hai lekin bahut kaam ka hai aur usse aapka wazan zarur zarur kam hoga aur aapko fayda bhi hoga so less is the new mode kam khao acha khao एंड सब पीपल से दैट हम लोग तो बाहर का खाना खाते ही नहीं हम लोग तो घर पर ही खाते हैं सो so, घर का खाना मतलब घर पर खाना नहीं घर का बनाए हुआ खाना खाना बिकॉज वी हैव स्विगी वी हैव जोमेटो वी हैव यू नो सो मेनी थिंग्स अवेलेबल दैट यू कैन हैव जंक फूड एट होम यू कैन एवरी डे यू कैन ऑर्डर समथिंग इमीजिएटली यू गेट पिज्जा यू गेट बर्गर यू गेट कोक यू गेट मिठाई यू गेट वॉट एवर यू वॉन्ट एंड देन You tend to gain weight. So, घर का खाना मतलब घर में खाना सिर्फ घर में तुम बाहर का खाना खाओगे तो कुछ काम होने नहीं वाला है घर का खाना मतलब घर का बनाया हुआ खाना खाओ सम जूसेस दे प्रिटेड टू बी हेल्दी बट दे आर नॉट हेल्दी बट दे आर यू नो सम न्यूट्रिय अकॉर्डिंग टू दीजन now i'll tell you 10 super foods which will improve your fertility levels and the first amongst them is nuts nuts are extremely important because they contain lot of selenium and the selenium is which is something which is going to help you in gaining uh, uh, in improving your fertility and in conception so you should have handful of nuts every day morning with a glass of milk that is the best thing you should have in the morning this is going to help you then next is green leafy vegetables because they contain folic acid and vitamin c which helps in improving the uh, conception the abortion rate reduces it improves the sperm quality for men spinach and broccoli is something which you should actually have in your diet then garlic garlic ka bahut zyada mahatva hai kyunki garlic jo hai usme selenium hai aur usme antioxidants hai जो बैलेंस करते हैं हार्मोन्स को और इवन मेन में स्पर्म मोटिलिटी को भी इम्प्रूव करते हैं सो यू शुड हैव गार्लिक सब पीपल से गार्लिक इज आल्सो इट इज एज वी ऑल नो कार्डियोलॉजिस्ट से दैट गार्लिक इज गुड फॉर हार्ट आल्सो सो गार्लिक इज समथिंग विच यू ऑल शुड हैव इन योर डायट देन डेयरी प्रोडक्ट्स डेयरी प्रोडक्ट्स आर गुड बिकॉज दे कंटेन कैल्शियम गुड फैट्स एंड विटामिन डी सो यू कैन यू शुड हैव योग यू शुड हैव बटर मिल्क यू शुड हैव बटर you should have whole milk in your daily diet then berries berries are excellent for men and women they contain vitamin c they contain antioxidants raspberries blueberries are known to reduce the weight also so you should have berries handful of berries every day in your diet beans beans are lean proteins and they also contain iron they also boost libido therefore in men if they take beans they will improve their sexual functioning or sexual power and sexual performance pumpkin seeds are also good because they improve the quality of the eggs and also quality of the semen therefore you should have this in your diet every day bananas bananas a, a banana every day in the morning along with milk and handful of nuts is the best diet you can have because they are jam packed with vitamin b6 so you can have it in, on the during breakfast it helps in ovulation it contains potassium and also contains vitamin c eggs संडे हो या मंडे रोज खाओ अंडे एक अंडा व्हाइट ऑफ एक एवरी डे गिव यू सो मच ऑफ प्रोटीन्स दैट इट हेल्प्स इट इट हेल्प्स यू अ लॉट इट आल्सो कंटेन्स ओमेगा थ्री फैटी एसिड्स देन किनोआ सीड्स किनोआ राजगिरा किनोआ फिफ्टी परसेंट ऑफ डेली ग्रेन शुड बी होल ग्रेन एंड प्लांट बेस्ड प्रोटीन ऑल्सो इम्प्रूव कंसेप्शन इट ऑल्सो हेल्प इन ब्लड शुगर कंट्रोल and quinoa seeds they are high in fiber and therefore you should have quinoa seeds every day in your diet and if you are non vegetarian then uh, this uh, fish and chicken 
is something which is really going to help you because it contains a lot of proteins and vitamin B12. Usually vegetarians are deficient in vitamin B12 because they, the non-vegetarians, they have the advantage. They get more of vitamin B12 uh, over the vegetarians. So you should have fish. At least you can have fish because many uh, 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 areas like um, Goa or for, for the matter Bengal, fish is a staple diet. They cannot survive without fish. So fish is something which is so rich in omega-3 fatty acids, contains good proteins, and it is definitely going to help you. It, it is good for digestion also. So you can have fish, you should have non-vegetarian diet, which is rich in vitamin B12. Avoid junk foods, avoid fried fatty foods, high cholesterol food. Red meat is not good for health, and therefore you should avoid that. Now we can talk about the macronutrients, carbohydrates, proteins, and fats. Um, fats खाना ही नहीं ऐसा नहीं है इनफैक्ट अच्छे क्वालिटी के फैट्स आपने जरूर लेने चाहिए हाई अनसेचुरेटेड फैट्स आर गोइंग टू हेल्प यू बट मोनो सेचुरेटेड एंड पॉलीसेचुरेट फैट्स आर नॉट गुड सो फैट्स एंड ऑयल्स आर गुड यू कैन हैव दैट सो मॉडर्ट इंटेक ऑफ फैट इज गुड थर्टी टू थर्टी फाइव परसेंट नट्स राइस ब्रैन इज समथिंग फैटी फिश सर्म सैमन एंड ऑलिव ऑयल एंड ऑल दिस थिंग्स दे आर एक्चुअली कंटेनिंग गुड फैट्स which are going to have uh, its impact in fertility so uh, salmon fatty fish nuts rice bran moderate intake of fats 30 to 35% will help you in conception again it is said that you should have an indian diet contains lot of carbohydrates carbohydrate khana hi nahi aisa nahi hai carbohydrate tum kha sakte ho lekin carbohydrates kaun se khana ye aapko batana chahiye those with the fiber contain more fibers like grains and cereals then you can have the, the carbohydrate which has does not have a effect on blood sugar levels the carbohydrate with low glycemic index is good because it improves the quality of the sperm and also improves the quality of the oocytes therefore carbohydrate with low glycemic index is something which you should have so what are the carbohydrate with low glycemic index load um they are the carbohydrates which are you know going to help you in reducing the insulin levels reducing the c reactive proteins and therefore also reduce the chronic low grade inflammation so this is something which you should remember that high carbohydrate very high carbohydrate and low carbohydrate diet is also not good some people they have that you know there are now nowadays so many diets which are available so sirf carbohydrates khana ya fir bilkul carbohydrates khana hi nahi very high and very low carbohydrate diet is not good in fact what you should do is you should reduce the carbohydrate to some extent and replace it with proteins but high protein and low carbohydrate diet has got very serious issues in future you can develop diabetes or you can have cancer because of that high risk of type 2 diabetes and high mortality also so this is not good very low and high protein diet is also not good so what is important is small degree of restriction of the carbohydrates and increase a, pro a protein uh, intake by some extent so 45% of carbohydrates 25% of proteins and 35% of fats is something which you should have so this is the plate where you should have good amount of carbohydrates uh, good amount of proteins uh, and of course fats and lots and lots of vegetables so in short your plate should have the carbohydrate which is having low glycemic index like cereals bread starchy foods like legumes uh, sweet corn pasta noodles and brown rice then proteins you should have lean red meat or any fish or chicken eggs tofu and poultry so ideally you should avoid red meat or then you can have lean red meat vegetables half of plate or even more than half of plate should be of vegetables and you can have as you can use as many colors as possible you can use green leafy vegetables you can have salad you can have carrot you can have green beans peas broccoli cauliflower onion asparagus micronutrients and antioxidants rich uh, vegetables are definitely going to help you in improving your conception and on the top of the plate you should have black and white chia seeds add feta then parmesan 
and other cheese this is something which you can add and outside the plate you can have either a buttermilk better to have fruit rather than having fruit juice because fruit is any time better or you can have milk or yogurt or milk products like curd and yogurt so this is something which you should have outside out outside the plate so this is something which you can have in your diet this is a balanced diet and this diet is some uh, definitely going to help you in improving your conception rate now so as i told you carbohydrate high carbohydrate diet is not good but very low carbohydrate diet is also not good good and the saturated fatty acids high intake is also going to have its impact it reduces the sperm count and the sperm motility also carbohydrates are known to have problem with ovulation uh, glycemic index as i have been stressing on this point that low glycemic index index diet promotes uh, good uh, quality of oocytes improves conception rate and also improves the pregnancy rate protein intake is also good because it reduces the hyperinsulinemia helps in management of weight and it also improves the quality of the eggs and sperms so proteins they are definitely going to help you in so many ways it sustains there is a sustained satiety with proteins hunger hormone ghrelin it reduce it is reduced by protein intake and appetite reducing hormones are increased by protein intake and therefore effectively your there is increased satiety helps to decrease the energy intake and helps in the successful weight management and loss of weight so protein is definitely have its impact on the ghrelin which is a hunger hormone also it also has its impact on diet induced thermogenesis thermogenesis is highest for proteins which is 20 to 30% compared to carbohydrate which is only 5 to 10% and fats it is it which is only 0 to 3% therefore more energy is required for metabolizing proteins and hence leading this leading it helps in successful weight loss and management of the weight so proteins they are having its impact in so many ways it in, uh, improves the diet induced thermogenesis sustained satiety and therefore reduces the weight fat as i told you you should have fat in your diet but this fat should be a, a good quality fat diet which is having omega 3 fatty acids helps in improvement of sperm quality improvement in the energy of metabolism of sperms and also oocytes and therefore the diet which is rich in saturated fatty acids is not good but omega 3 fatty acids it is good and this is definitely have its effect on fertility there are studies which say that omega 3 fatty acid improves ivf results and there are studies which say that trans fatty acids they increase the problem of infertility in men as well as in women therefore trans fatty acids are not good omega 3 fatty acids are good uh, it is said that there is something called epigenetics where the environment and nutrition has its impact on fertility uh, uh, the environment and nutrition hormonal and physiological factors they play role in epigenetics and this epigenetics if it is improved then you can have good fertility in recent times various studies have indicated that aberrant epigenetic mechanisms are associated with reproductive infertility and many dietary food components can help to fix those aberrant epigenetic modifications into the normal state due to reversible nature of the epigenetic modifications so you can reverse these changes by having good diet so epigenetics can be uh, epigenetic modifications can be fixed by dietary modifications something which we all should remember in the nutrition has got its impact on the and uh, importance in uh, epigenetics nutrition plays an important role in enhancing reproductive efficacy and efficiency in men and women dietary factors have got role to play in various infertility factors and dietary factors do not directly lead to epigenetic changes changes but they modulate the associated epigenetic enzymes and indirectly by modulating epigenetic enzymes dietary modification helps in improving the fertility by its active role in epigenetics so though indirect there is a different role of diet fruits vegetables 
they are going to have very good and major role to play in fertility it improves sperm motility improves sperm quality increases the risk of uh, improves the egg quality but it is said that if you take citrus fruits then it may increase endometriosis but it reduces uh, sorry cruciferous vegetables they increase the risk of endometriosis but citrus fruits they reduce the risk of endometriosis so uh, cauliflower or cruciferous vegetables should be avoided if you have endometriosis but vitamin c rich diet or citrus fruit fruits they help in improving the endometriosis uh, fruits helps in main also and it also helps in improving the quality of the eggs seafood is good for both men and women and therefore both the partners should consume uh, more than 8 serves per cycle or approximately per more than 2 serves per cycle if you take this seafood then it helps in improving the fertility and fecundity and chances of conception so seafood is good red process meat red process meat is not good it increases the problem with the sperm count it reduces the sperm count it also reduces the ovulatory quality or oocytes and therefore red process meat is to be avoided this is something which you all should know you should have diet which is rich in folic acid because folic acid is has its impact on infertility and we always start folic acid 3 months before conception because it helps in preventing the defects like neural tube defects in the babies and also the reduces the risk of cardiac malformation in the babies so before conception you should always start at least 3 months before conception you should start folic acid taking folic acid tablets also and the food which is rich in folic acid so as i told you folic acid is good for uh, improving the sperm quality and egg quality and what is a folic acid rich diet dark vegetables broccoli spinach uh, then uh, beans peanuts fresh fruits seafood eggs whole grains and liver these are the things which are rich in folic acid so if you take all this in your diet then you get adequate folic acid and you can also take folic acid tablets when you are start planning for conception iron is also important and uh, it is a red meat and uh, seafood uh, contains rich is rich in uh, iron even some uh, of course green leafy vegetables are also rich in iron then um, um you should have diet which is rich in iron because iron helps in the conception vitamin c is also important and therefore it is said that you take citrus fruits every day in your diet because it helps in improving the conception rate uh vitamin c is also good for men because it improves the fertility in men also vitamin d sunshine is something which gives you vitamin d so if you say stand in sunlight for 15 to 20 minutes every day in the afternoon around 12 noon then it gives you adequate of vitamin d also you can take vitamin d tablets and the diet which is rich in vitamin d iodized namak or yeah iodized salt is something which is available everywhere and this iodine also helps in improving the fertility also there are problems with thyroid which can be taken care of if you take iodine in your diet selenium is one important component which helps in improving fertility in improving the testosterone synthesis improvement of the sperm defects increases in the seminal concentration and is good for men also it is good for women coenzyme q10 is one more thing which is good for improving fertility and antioxidants in general vitamin c zinc vitamin e coenzyme q10 selenium all these antioxidants and all these things together help in improving fertility so you should have diet which is rich in all this and there are also tablets which are available available they contain lycopene l carnitine coenzyme q10 zinc vitamin c vitamin e folic acid and these diets you should actually these tablets you should actually take both the partners can take these tablets which are called as fertility boosting antioxidants 
and if you take this diet in your uh, every day uh, before planning for conception they help you in conception so these are the drugs which you should take um uh, now uh, that's the this is exactly what i was saying that can pills replace diet uh the answer is no pills do not replace diet but you should have a combination of both good diet as well as pills and both have their own importance so we must continue to have good diet and you can take pills depending on the situation you can consult your doctor before taking pills and but pills cannot replace healthy diet but you if you are actually planning for pregnancy if you take pills these pills will help you in having uh, conception in a better way a faster conception and also the risk of defects or anomalies in the babies are also reduced if you take all these pills like folic acid caffeine in, increases the infertility risk therefore too much of caffeine is bad for health not more than 4 cups of coffee per day and coffee and caffeine restriction uh, intake should be reduced smoking is of course bad not only for men also for women and it improve it reduces the ovarian reserve it uh, increases the risk of miscarriage and abortions decreases the con 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 count of the sperms and delays the conception therefore smoking should be avoided and alcohol also has got negative impact on the fertility therefore alcohol should also be avoided even modest alcohol intake like five drinks in a week has got negative effect on the semen quality and therefore alcohol should be avoided altogether nowadays initially i remember when we started working 20 25 years back we used to tell male partners to stop smoking and stop alcohol but nowadays the trends are changing even because of the you know the changing uh, uh, scenario uh, more and more girls are into social drinking and many girls are smoking also so we have started asking this point in the history we ask do you smoke do you take consume alcohol if yes then please please stop smoking and stop consuming alcohol because smoking and alcohol are definitely going to have negative impact on the fertility and you should stop this otherwise you will have problem with the conception some people they say that you should try mediterranean diet mediterranean diet is also good for uh, infertility and there are many studies which have said that mediterranean diet has improved success rate in ivf so you can try this mediterranean diet you must be knowing what is mediterranean diet it contains all this um, stuff which is good for conception so what is pro fertility diet pro fertility diet as i told you is a diet which is a good balance of carbohydrates proteins and fats reduce carbohydrate to some extent increase proteins to some extent take fats take carbohydrates with low glycemic index have proteins which are going to improve your fertility you can have good quality of fats also in your diet with more and more omega 3 fatty acids supplement your diet with vitamins b12 vitamin d vitamin c folic acids take low processed fruits and vegetables organic fruits and organic vegetables whole grains in your diet seafood at least you should have fish once a week dairy products and soya food is definitely going to improve your chances of pregnancy mediterranean diet is good for pregnancy and conception and therefore if you have this balanced diet then definitely you will get a good chance of pregnancy in ivf and even in simple treatment now there are some frequently asked questions many people they ask me these questions can we start exercise the the answer is yes you can and you should and you must start exercise and it is never too late even if you are taking treatment you should continue doing exercise and you must do moderate exercise can we do 
exercise during treatment you have to do it exercise but you should not increase the intensity of exercise you continue with the exercise which you are already doing when to stop doing exercise if you are doing simple treatment like iui or time intercourse in iui in simple treatment there is no need to stop doing exercise even on the day of iui सुबह तुमने आई किया तो शाम को तुमको एक्सरसाइज करना ही है आपको वॉक के लिए जाना ही है आपका एक्सरसाइज आपको बंद नहीं करना है डू नॉट स्टॉप इवन ऑन दैट डे ड्यूरिंग आई वी एफ इन द लास्ट टेन डेज एंड सेवन डेज टू टेन डेज आफ्टर ट्रांसफर यू शुड लिमिट योर एक्सरसाइज यू कैन गो फॉर ट्वेंटी मिनट्स वॉक बट यू शुड नॉट डू स्ट्रेनियस एक्सरसाइज ड्यूरिंग आई लास्ट टेन डेज बिफोर ट्रांसफर एंड टेन डेज आफ्टर ट्रांसफर you should have light exercise but you should not stop doing exercise but you can go for 20 minutes walk and as i said can you do exercise after embryo transfer in ivf even after embryo transfer you can take your embryo for a walk do light exercise even after doing embryo transfer go for a walk but not strenuous exercise only light exercise now about diet there are frequent questions which are asked one question is shall i appoint dietitian you can take help of dietitian especially when you are overweight or there are so many channels which are available on youtube so many things which are available on net you can get good knowledge but get proper knowledge and the right person should guide you as far as diet diet is concerned when to start diet you should start or plan your diet 3 to 6 months before starting treatment earlier the better and shall i have diet plan as i said you can select diet plan and follow as per days follow diet as per what i have told you but no need to go for intense diet regime there are now so many diet options which are available and the latest is dikshit diet and uh, before that it was uh, divekar diet divekar diet is frequent small meals dikshit diet is only two meals in a day i think you have this is a million dollar question you can select whatever diet plan you want to wish to select or you wish to go for but you should remember that whenever you are taking plan any plan or uh, following any plan it should suit your personality or you should suit suit your eating dietary habits like suppose if you ask me frankly speaking i cannot go for dikshit diet because i always prefer frequent small meals har 4 se 6 ghante mein kuch to khana chahiye aisa mujhe personally lagta hai aur wo mere personality ko suit karta hai mere dietary habits ko suit karta hai to aapki dietary habits kaisi hai us hisab se aap jo bhi karna hai wo karo lekin usse ek baat dhyan mein rakho ki aapka weight reduction hote rehna chahiye so as i told you be smart in your diet and exercise plan healthy lifestyle is something which is important uh lifestyle interventions like diet and exercise should be done and recommended 5 to 10% of weight loss is what is the achievable goal so you should not dekho aapka vajan yadi 100 kilo hai aur maine aapko bola ki 2 mahine mein 50 kilo vajan kam karke aao to wo sambhav nahi hai lekin yadi aapne har 2 mahine mein 5% weight reduction ka aim target rakha so this is a achievable goal which you can achieve and therefore you can actually you will feel happy and better otherwise what happens that you follow some crash diet course you reduce your weight and then there is a rebound weight gain and this sudden reduction in the weight also has its impact on the general health your general health so you should not go for sudden weight loss programs but what you should do is you should step by slowly you should reduce the weight and target should be achievable target of only 5% so specific measurable achievable realistic and timely approach that is smart approach is the best thing to do whenever you are going for fertility treatment as i told you balanced diet approach is good general healthy eating principle should be followed aisa kuch nahi hai ki yahi diet follow karo in fact you should have general healthy diet specific diet is not recommended you can have whatever you want 
so uh, what you should do is deficit of 30% or 500 calories to 750 calories per day is something which is good for weight loss and tailoring diet according to food preferences should be done it should be flexible it should be a individualized approach not a tailor made approach but it should be uh, it should be uh, not a generalized approach but approach but it should be a tailor made approach whatever you suits you whatever is good for you you should follow that and this is something which helps you in improving the conception 2020 we have experienced we have seen the biggest lockdown in the history because of the corona and this lockdown has created many problems in 1980 computers were fat men were slim in 2020 the computers are slim but men are becoming fat and that is the reality and that is the sad part of the story but this is true and therefore what is important is so what is uh, at home message you are sitting at the comfort of your home you are listening to my address on diet and fertility so your message which you should remember is bmi plays a very important role in the fertility so you should have a have bmi between 20 Two to twenty-four, less than twenty-four, and more than twenty. So twenty-two, twenty-two, twenty-four is the ideal BMI. Do not wait for weight reduction. Start treatment and also start weight reduction simultaneously. Scientific evidences prove that there is a role of nutrition in fertility. Therefore, have balanced diet with with uh, whatever I have told you, and do not underestimate the role of exercise and lifestyle in fertility. Exercise is very important. एक्सरसाइज यू मस्ट डू और रिमेम्बर एक्सरसाइज की कोई पिल नहीं होती एक्सरसाइज की कोई गोली नहीं होती जो एक गोली खा लो तो रोज का तुम्हारा एक्सरसाइज हो जाएगा ये संभव नहीं है आपको अच्छे से एक्सरसाइज करते रहना है और अच्छा डाइट लेते रहना है सो आई थैंक यू ऑल फॉर लिस्निंग टू माई दिस यूट्यूब चैनल एंड आई माई हम्बल रिक्वेस्ट टू प्लीज subscribe our youtube channel and uh, share like and share my youtube channel and uh, dekhte rahiye mujhse milte rahiye mujhse baat karte rahiye dhanyawad aapka shukriya thank you